Are you struggling with the CPA exam because your course failed to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, where the right teacher makes all the difference. All right, here's a far sim on the equity method that if you get a tough equity method sim, it's going to be just like this. They'll give you a bunch of facts like this. On September 1, Pick Corp purchased 40% of String Corp for 115000 in cash. String Corp had net income of 500000 that was earned evenly throughout the year. String Corp paid dividends of 10000 and 15000 When did they pay it? On July 31st and December 31st. Why is that important when they paid the dividends? Because Pick Corp was only a stockholder from September 1st on. So does Pick Corp get any of the $10,000 dividend? No, because that was paid in July. But Pick Corp would get its share of the $15,000 dividend, the one paid December 31st. So 40% was purchased. Sounds like the equity method to me unless they give you an indication that they don't have significant influence, you would expect that they would have significant influence if they purchase 40%. Then it goes on to say book value and fair value are the same for all the assets and liabilities of String Corp, except for equipment with a fair value of 60,000 greater than book value and a patent that was internally generated, which means it doesn't have any book value because they expense the cost, but it has a fair value of $30,000. So that means we're going to have to write up that $90,000. And String had purchased another company years earlier, and as a result, has goodwill on its books for $50,000. So there's the facts. And then in another tab, they're going to give you the balance sheet of String Corp, the assets, the liabilities, and the equity. So there'll be a fresh exhibit, and you'll have to click on it, and that'll contain the balance sheet of String Corp on the date of 40% acquisition. So if you want to know what the book value of the net assets are of String Corp, what's the fastest way to determine that? I mean, you could take the assets, add them up, subtract the liabilities, and that's your net assets. Or what's faster than that, more accurate? Just grab the equity, the common stock, the APIC, and the retained earnings, whatever those three accounts add up to, has to be equal to assets minus liabilities. So common stocks 80, APIC 20, and retained earnings 110, that's a quick and accurate way to know that the total book value of String Corp on the date of 40% acquisition is $210,000. Yes, you could add the assets up and subtract the liabilities, but there's more of a chance of making a mistake doing that because look, there's a contra asset here. There's a couple of liabilities. It's going to take you some time. And the more time you spend doing that, the more of a chance you can make an error. So if they want to know what the book value of the entity is, just add up the equity. So I'm going to pull out the equity and just put it right here so that we know whenever we need to calculate the book value of String Corp, we know it's 80000 plus 20,000, plus 110, total of 210,000. So the facts will be given in more than one tab, more than one exhibit, and you'll have to extract what you need. And that's what we did here. We pulled out the equity of String Corp from the balance sheet. And now maybe we don't need to, the balance sheet again. We'll see. What do they want to know in number one? Prepare the journal entry for Pick Corp to record the acquisition of String Corp at September 1st. Okay, so remember, this acquisition was not made January 1st. It was made September 1st. We said this sim, a little bit more sophisticated, something they could ask. And they bought 40%, so we're going to use the equity method to account for this. But on day one, all we're doing is spending 115000 in cash. So we're going to credit cash, and what are we going to debit? We're going to debit an account called Investment in String Corp. That's an asset. It's going to go on the balance sheet. So it's all balance sheet today. Debit investment in String Corp and credit cash for the amount paid. 115000 was paid for a 40% ownership interest. And that's all they wanted in question one so far. What I suggest you do is use a T account. Investment in String Corp. There's going to be a lot of activity in this T account. So set it up, put 115000 
That's your acquisition. Debit side because it's an asset. Next question wants to know how much income from investment is recognized by PICCORP without regard to any undervalued assets. So under the equity method, what counts as income for the investor, not the dividends, the income earned by the investee? In this case, how much did String Corp earn? They earned 500,000 of net income, it tells us. And they earned it when? Evenly throughout the year. But Pick Corp was only a stockholder from September 1st on. So watch what we have to do here. We'll take that 500,000, multiply by 40% for four months over 12. September, October, November, and December. Don't be afraid to use finger math on the exam. Four twelfths comes out to 66,667. And you would make a debit to that new account you just created, investment in String Corp. That's going up. And you'll credit equity income in String Corp. There's an income statement account right there. And you'll credit that for 66667 So one balance sheet account, one income statement account. And this entry is made at year end by Pick Corp to pick up its share of income earned by String Corp. But because of the equity method, Pick Corp gets to recognize it on its income statement. So here's our T account for investment in String Corp. We had the initial 115,000 at acquisition. Now we're adding 66,667, and that's gonna increase the balance of that asset investment in String Corp. I would also do a T account for this new account, equity income in String Corp, your income statement account, gets credited for 66,667. And they might ask you at the end, what's the final balance of this account? Okay, in question three, they wanna know, prepare the journal entry for the dividends received by Pick Corp. Well, there were two dividends, if you remember. There was a dividend of $10,000. That was on July 31st. Then there was a dividend of $15,000. That was on December 31st. The only one of those that applies to Pick Corp is the December 31st dividend because the one that happened earlier in the year, the $10,000 dividend, that was before Pick Corp was a stockholder. So it's only this $15,000 dividend that we've got to journalize. And we'll debit cash for $6,000 and we'll credit investment in String Corp, $6,000. That's 40% of the $15,000. And that's a dividend received on December 31st. So we don't have to worry about four twelfths of that because that dividend was received on December 31st when Pick Corp was a stockholder. So they're entitled to 40% of that $15,000 dividend on December 31st, which is $6,000 because this dividend was not paid evenly throughout the year, this dividend was paid on December 31st. So don't multiply this times 4 twelfths or you're gonna get it wrong. Now the income we did multiply by 4 twelfths, but not the dividend, because the income was earned evenly throughout the year, but the dividend was not. The dividend was paid, one was paid back in July, Pick Corp isn't entitled to any of that, and the dividend paid in December Pick Corp's entitled to their 40% share of that. And the other thing I want you to notice about this entry is that there's no income associated with this because dividends do not represent income under the equity method. So to the investor, Pick Corp, this 6,000 cash is not income. It doesn't impact the income statement. This is a balance sheet account. This credit to investment in String Corp, this is a reduction of that balance sheet account in fact, let's look at that account right now. Where does that account stand? Let's look at the T account for that investment in String Corp. We had 115,000 at the date of acquisition. We added the income of 66,667 in question number two. And now in question three, we reduce the investment in String Corp for the $6,000 dividend because under the equity method, dividends reduce the investment account. What about our other T account, that equity income in String Corp? We said dividends received are not income under the equity method. So that's why we didn't make any entry to the equity income in String Corp. The income statement account is still with the 66,667 balance that it had in question number two. Now, hopefully you feel pretty good about the first three questions of this sim.